One of the things I love about the book of Proverbs is how accurate Solomon is in the wisdom that God gave him and in seeing the world, in how people work, what's going on in our hearts. Even when those things are cutting and rebuke to us, uh, it's still amazing and teaching us about God's ways and uh, how God's world works. Uh, and today we're going to see a real treasure that is really hard to find and something that's a challenge to us in the way that we carry ourselves, in the way that we are loyal and faithful and what that looks like. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the book of Proverbs. And we pray today that you will make us wise. You'll make us faithful and have an unfailing love like you have for us. This great treasure that you uh, point out for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 6. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. Uh, let me read it again just to get the gravity of it. My, many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. You can tell by the way that that proverb is phrased that he's not expecting to be able to find anyone in that category. It's uh, it, it, What's he talking about? He's talking about the way that people will promise you things and they look like they love you. They'll be on your team and so on. But when the chips are down, are they really going to be around? And he's saying, suggesting that that's a really unlikely thing. It's very rare to find someone like that. I mean, when you find someone like that, it's a real treasure, isn't it? It's a wonderful thing. And in one sense, that's what God's calling us to be, is to be that faithful, unfailing love kind of person in all our relationships with God, uh, with each other, with the church, with uh, people we're following up, even though they might not want us to be on their case, right? This unfailing love creates faithfulness, loyalty, uh, keeping our word, being there for them, putting their interests first. Uh, it's a rare and wonderful thing. Um, but he's saying, you just look around and you see the promises of unfailing love everywhere. You see it, I guess, he's a king as he writes this and uh, he'd be very, very aware of the declarations of allegiance which uh, come out of convenience. Sometimes they come out of fear. Well, the, if he's powerful, he'll do something to us. Sometimes they'll come and go, wow, they're mighty and wonderful. I want to be on their team uh, a, until there's a better offer around. It's interesting, uh, Machiavelli, uh, very famous uh, name almost synonymous with evil and manipulation. Uh, but it, it, he, he's a ruthlessly uh, uh, cle clever examiner of human nature. So the book that Machiavelli wrote was called The Prince. And uh, he asked hard questions about humanity. And the book is about what, what should a prince do who's in charge? They've been given power of a province, an area, a country. H how do you act as a prince? That's Machiavelli's kind of the original political advice book. And he asked the question uh, quite a way through it. Is it better as a prince to be loved or feared? Uh, and everyone wanted, wants us for, uh, to say that the answer is to be loved. But he says, actually, if you're a prince, <coughs> it's better to be feared than loved. Why? What does Machiavelli have to say about that? <coughs> he says, uh, princes who are loved... Wow, people you know, cheer them as they walk down the street. They feel good about themselves. <coughs> but uh, as soon as there's trouble, they'll turn on you. That goes, and he's got this incisive view of human nature. He says, because people at heart are wicked, fickle, evil, the selfish, and so on. And so if you're only loved, well, um, you're bound for trouble. You're an idiot. You're a fool as a leader. Uh, whereas if you are feared, uh, then people will always do what you say. You will be in charge forever. And so give up on being loved and just be feared. That's his advice to the prince. Uh, now, we hate that. We call that a totalitarian regime, but that's how they work, isn't it? Because this is what people like. They claim to have unfailing love, 
but they're unfaithful. So what do you do in a community like that? It's really hard to know, isn't it? Uh, and lucky we don't have that leadership responsibility over nations and provinces to be able to figure it all out. Uh, and so, but the, but the point that Solomon's making here is this just so rare, so against our natures, isn't it? To have this complete faithfulness that expresses itself in unfailing love. You just, you look around and people are gonna let you down. Uh, and he's saying you to be only truly wise, you've got to understand that about people. You've got to understand that you're going to need to make contingencies so that when people let you down, it's not the end of the world. You, you saw it coming. You've got a backup plan, right? That there will be times of trouble. On the other hand, also wisdom is to say, well, the people you find who really are uh, faithful and committed in unfailing love, not just in their words, but they will follow through. Right, you want to cultivate those relationships. They are the people who are going to be on your side no matter what. And so this rare treasure, you want to cultivate that. But in the end, I think he's saying real wisdom is to then look at yourself and look at ourselves and say, well, why am I not like that? Why do I have this unfailing love, not just in my words, but in my actions? Am I faithful? And the reality is that the Bible keeps condemning us, doesn't it, for unfaithfulness, particularly unfaithfulness to our God and Father. Uh, it's interesting. There's a great example of exactly this declaration of unfailing love that has no faithfulness uh, in the words of the Lord Jesus in the Sermon on Mount. He's talking about judgment day and many will stand before the throne and say, of judgment and say, Lord, Lord. Didn't I do all these things for you? I said, you know, I loved you and I you know, stood up and I did wonderful things in your name. And he said, he'll say, oh, away from me, you never, I never knew you. You're wicked and evil. You used your things for selfishness and gain and so on like that. That's a bit of a paraphrase. You can see that in Matthew chapter 7 though. Uh, and so lots of people claim to have faithfulness and even you know, when they're confronted with it, they'll go, yeah, but didn't I, you, you can see uh, before God, um, you might be able to trick people, but you can never fool God. But there is someone, isn't there, who has this unfailing love, not just in their words, but he's absolutely faithful in everything. Who is that? Well, God is, and Jesus is, who is God become man, the son of God. Right, they have this perfect character, and that is so rare that it's impossible to find completely amongst other people. Right, Jesus is the ultimate example of faithfulness and sticking through and unfailing love. So much is his un love unfailing that he would even go to the cross for us. It's a wonderful thing. But he does teach us and train us, therefore, what it looks like. He's given us the prime example. He died for us more than an example, but he didn't die less as for an example. Uh, he died to do deal with our sin and the consequences of it, to give us access to the Spirit, to the Father, that cleanses and changes and mold us. But he also sets an example for us in how to keep going, how to stick through with things. You can see it in the Garden of Gethsemane when he's praying, I, like, I'd rather not do this. Father, if there's any other way other than going to the cross, can we take it that way? If I could just do 20 push-ups and that would pay for this, let's go that way, Father, if there's some other plan. But he knows in the end the will of the Father is that there, because there is no other plan, is to go through it. And so he will pray, yet not my will but yours be done. And that is true faithfulness, isn't it, right? God, I'm committed to you, God. If there's no other way, I want to do, I'm going to do it your way, no matter what. And we're being called and challenged here to have that kind of unfailing love, not just to find those people and cultivate them, which in one sense is impossible, but there are some that are better than others at it, but cultivate those. But to recognize the truth that all of us are weak, all of us fail in our words, uh, and to look to the one who really does have unfailing love, not just says it, but does it. Uh, and to trust him and lean on him. That's why he's our greatest friend. He's our brother. He's our savior. He's the one we should look to. And so it's a great, uh, a great challenge, isn't it? And a good call to look at our own lives and to examine them and say, well, okay, how have I been unfailing? How have I broken my word and claims of unfailing love to others? 
You know, I've been called to love God with all my heart, soul, mind and strength. I've called to love my neighbor as my neighbor. And that's called to be an unfailing love in those things. But I break that all the time, don't I? Because I'm sinful and weak and I'm selfish and I do all these things. And so what are some areas that's worth reflecting on uh, as, as we come to God's Word? We don't want it to just wash over us, but to reflect and think, well, okay, have I let someone down? Have I made a promise that I haven't kept? Have I not been loving in a way I know I should be? I'm connected to this person. And how can I follow through as the Lord has followed through for me uh, and given me everything? And so let's not be people of words only, but of action. That's what we're being called to. Let's cultivate those relationships and let's come up with contingency plans because we know that this is not what people like, but let's look to the Lord Jesus, the King over all, the faithful one, the one who loves our hearts and souls and has done everything for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you that uh, Solomon could just see so clearly the problem of humanity and therefore our problem of unfaithfulness. We say we love We say that we will be loyal in all circumstances to those around us, but the truth is that we're frail and weak, we're selfish, and so when it's inconvenient, we'll often break our word. Father, it exposes our sin. Thank you for the Lord Jesus, who is completely faithful, who is always loving, whose love is unfailing, who will never leave us or forsake us. Thank you for his mercy, his death on the cross for us, and thank you that he's with us, and we pray, please, that we'll learn from him to be, to be un, uh, unfailing in our faithfulness and love. We're going to stuff up and we sin all the time. But help us to uh, repent of that when we notice it in our lives. Help us to do something about it, particularly in our relationship with you. And we pray, please, that each day you'll mold us to be more and more faithful and loving as the Lord Jesus is, that he might be glorified as the one who's worthy of all praise, who sets the example, who is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the great lover of our souls. Make us more like him each day. We pray, please, that you'll help us understand humanity is like this so that we won't uh, be so shocked when it happens to us, when there's unfaithfulness and uh, people don't follow through all the time. Help us not just to excuse that, though, but help us to cultivate the right relationships and help us to be the right people in the relationships as well. Help us to be faithful in all things and to have an unfailing love of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be weak and imperfect, but Father, thank you for the way you change and mould us. And so keep creating that in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you again for another devotion tomorrow.